there. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Uh, youth protection. We all know uh, that it doesn't affect. It doesn't happen to us. But if we look around, we see all these organizations that, to include schools, that we have teachers doing things that teachers aren't supposed to be doing. We have people in charge of youth that aren't supposed to be, aren't doing, or shouldn't be doing what they're doing. So, um, this is Kiwanis's, uh response to a need, I guess. And see if I can function. The, the green light went off. Is that a problem? Uh -huh. Hang on. Push up right side. Right side. Okay. Child abuse can happen anywhere. And to anybody. Kiwanis Youth Programs have more than 300,000. That's all SLP programs. And are working with youth. We should have a trust with those youth that those youth are going to be protected. Qantas should act with the highest standards of care. In other words, we should not, we should always be above the, any standard that's out there. Now, I want to read a couple of things just to make sure that did I say it right? The uh, youth protection guidelines, make sure I'm on the right. Huh. No, I'm on the... There, you go. there we go. Uh, the guidelines protect both our youth and our adult members. And I want you to remember that. Youth protection guidelines are not just to protect the youth is to protect the adult leaders from uh, somebody, some youth getting mad at the adult leader and, and saying that that adult did something that the adult didn't do. And so if we stay with the guidelines, we will also protect our adult leaders when they're working with youth. Child abuse is harm to a child which occurs immediately or through accumulated efforts over a long period of time. Do you know that approximately 3 million cases of child abuse and neglect involving 5.5 five and five and billion children are reported each year? That is an astounding number. We'll discuss three of those types shortly. The emotional abuse is the most per pervasive and damaging type. It consists of neglecting your child's needs for emotional support, love and caring. The emotional abuse that exists independently of other forms, and you can have just emotional abuse. You don't have, it doesn't have to be associated with physical abuse. It's the hardest to detect, identify and stop because you do not see the outward signs that you do with physical abuse. And that physical abuse is any injury, bruise, burn, fracture, uh, head injury, that cannot be explained. And sexual abuse is any act of sexual act that uh, uh, dramatic, it, it comes out as dramatic behavior changes. Physical complaints such as headaches, stomach aches, genital pain or discomfort, Fear of a particular person or place, and of being alone with that person or place. So, uh, as we look at that, seldom are any of us going to see any of these abuses, but if you have that stuck in the back of your mind somewhere, you can say, oh, that's not right. That's something that's happening that shouldn't be right, that shouldn't be happening. Uh, Troubling behavior. This term is used in guidelines and defines all forms of child abuse. Behavior not in accordance with Kiwanis guidelines. Illegal behavior as a youth or adult. And something that causes your internal voice to say something is not right about this.
Education, uh, what you're doing, your clubs should be educated annually, and that's what's happening here today. Uh, it's a Qantas club must inform and educate its members on youth protection guidelines. And it says that if you go to district or international uh, training sessions, there should be uh, conferences or educational programs dealing with something with this subject. Yeah. Chaperones. Chaperones must be 21 years of age or older and approved by the school or agency to accompany youth to an event. Normally, we don't act with a youth event that's not also being co-sponsored by a school or a community center. And so that's what this, if a chaperone is either approved by Kiwanis or by the person you're co-sponsoring, the organization you're co-sponsoring it with, like Key Club. Key Club is associated normally with a school. And so <coughs> our advisor in Crawfordsville, she has had a background check because of what she actually physically does on her job every day of the week. But she also, because she's in the schools quite a bit, she has a school approved background check. Background checks. Uh, it's required of any Kiwanis advisor to an SLP club, just like our advisor in the Crawfordville club has a background check and um, it's encouraged for all adults working or serving Kiwanis youth. The advisor has to have it, and if you look, the secretary looks on their reporting form, there's a place for the secretary to say, yes, our Kiwanis advisor, our advisor to Key Club or Circle K has a background check. Clubs should have a policy. Uh, not in their bylaws, but in their club policy for what you do, how you should react, and how the background checks are handled. Who does them, where, where that confidential material is stored, who has control of it, it's, it is confidential. Uh, and they say that they shouldn't be valid for more than 10 years. Uh, a lot of places are saying two years. So, uh, overnight stays, one adult for every 10 youth of the same gender. So if you have 11 of girls going to something, you, sh you need two adults, two adult females. And the advisor should never be in the same sleeping quarters with the youth, unless it's a big barracks type facility and there's more than one adult in there. Transportation. Uh, you should check with your, test check with your local laws and, and here, uh, I'm not sure there's many laws about it, but schools have a policy about transporting students. Find out what those laws are, what those policies are. And the rule of three, if you get nothing else out of this program, I want you to remember rule of three. That means that an adult should never be alone with one child unless that child is your offspring. There should always be another adult or two children present. Never one-on-one -on -one in a closed room. And medication, you, uh, if you're going somewhere, there's permission slip that should be filled out that uh, gives the adult certain uh, policies, things they should do. You should never give medication to a child. If the child needs medication, they are to take it themselves. They should bring enough. If they're anticipating needing an aspirin or an Advil, they need to bring it. You can't give them one of yours. 
because they could say, well, I don't know what he gave me, but he gave me something. Uh, this just speaks for itself. You should never, if you're out in charge of a bunch of kids, you should never be drinking or smoking. Just the wrong, wrong message to be sent. Reporting. You must report if you observe troubling behavior. And learn what is illegal, what is of an illegal situation. You need to report that also. Uh, now, who do you report it to? Well, if you're not in charge, you report it to the person in charge. <laughs> so, uh, if, of an outing. And my notes are way behind where I'm at. It says that uh, all forms of child abuse, as, as described about, uh, previously when I was talking about it, should be reported. Behavior not in accordance with Qantas guidelines. And if you observe troubling behavior at an event, you report it immediately to the appropriate person for the event. And then they would eat, consider what's going on and report it to the local authorities, the child protection services, whoever is appropriate at that point in time. In short, a reasonable personal standard. Uh, this means consider what a reasonable person would do in a situation and act accordingly. If participants or chaperones are not in immediate danger, you contact the school personnel or the event person first, and they will have procedures in place for dealing with su suspected abuse or troubling behavior. If there is an immediate threat, you call the local authorities. You call 911 and tell them what's going on. Personal information. Keep it for at least three years. Keep it confidential. And when you destroy it, shred it. It's the only way to make sure that it actually gets destroyed. And you're going to talk about, I think, social media here a little bit longer. Adults should not initiate friendships. We should not be uh, asking a, a student to be a friend on Facebook. If they request it, that's, that's better. But I still think that you need to, you really need to think about what you're sharing out there, what it looks like on Facebook, or Twitter, or all the other different mediums that are out there now. Because all those interactions are public, and uh, there's, a, there's, there's so many different, I mean, I'm barely on Facebook, but there's so many other stuff out there that, that these young people are on, and they uh, interact with themselves. Leave it to the professionals. If you see behavioral health issues, report it, but leave it to the professionals. Unless, of course, you are a professional. Um, they, they're the ones that can handle it, and, and you can listen, you can be concerned, but don't try to, to uh, do anything. Always follow the highest standards. When, when what you think, what Kiwanis has and what the school has as rules, the one that has the most stringent rules is the ones you should be following. Best practices. Background checks every two years on anybody, on anybody dealing or helping youth especially the Qantas advisors, but if you're helping out, then you probably should have one on file that proves that you have nothing in your history. <laughs> Protection. Rule of three. Never be alone, one-on-one, -on -one with a child that's not your own. 
it just opens up too many uh, possible scenarios. <coughs> Best vehicle of choice is use the schools or a commercial one. If you have to use your private vehicle, you should still never be alone in that vehicle with one child that's not your own. There should always be three people. Follow your bylaws or your, your policies. Media, be helpful, but don't, don't become the spokesman unless you're in charge of the event. Let refer to somebody else. And maintain confidentiality in all of this uh, child protection standards. I mean, you can you can report it, but it stays confidential. There's a website or a phone number. You can make anonymous reports of, of child abuse. Um, so it needs to be confidential. If you sponsor an acting club, but you don't, so I'm, we, it's basically the same as uh, just dealing with any of the SLP clubs. Circle K, best practices still apply. Circle K members fall under the same background check policies as Kiwanians, especially since a lot of them are uh, 21. Kiwanis advisors to Circle Ks need to need an approved background check, even though a lot of them are, are adults. And uh, that's basically the the training. The important thing, in my opinion, is the rule of three and background checks for anybody that works with youth. Because I mean, we know that these teachers that have gotten in trouble have had background checks, but they've been allowed to be alone with another student, or they've con they've talked to a student on uh, Facebook or Twitter or whatever. But if you just remember the rule of three, I think most people will uh, be okay. Can we get a round of applause? <laughs> Thank you very much. Anybody that's been married 50 years or more, you may understand what I'm about to say. I told my wife my first choice, no, that's too negative. It was Folsom Prison Blues. Oh, no, that's and uh, I know I thought it good too, but you got to remember she is, uh, some say the boss. So then I thought of uh, Love Me Tender, that's sweet. She said, Valentine's over. <laughs> So she said, why don't you do his hand in mine? That's one of Elvis's numbers. Well, some of you may not know, but my wife and Elvis were classmates. And uh, she's told me things about Elvis. Number one, I'm double, double dipping right now because Bob Scott just passed away. And for some reason, Bob wanted to do a story on me, and it's a huge story. And I still proudly keep it. And he wanted me to, he took a big picture of my head, right back my mouth open wide as usual, and uh, he wrote about my singing, and then he put a, an excellent article about my wife and Elvis, she, and he said, she, she misses Elvis, she told me, he said, that's wrong, I didn't say that, <laughs> I don't miss Elvis, I didn't care anything about him, <laughs> and uh, I don't want to say too much, but Elvis was a po' boy, P.O. po' boy from Tupelo, who moved up to Memphis, lived in the quarters in the south, that's where a lot of poor people live. But they had a church in that area, thank God, that they cared about the poor. And uh, she, re she told me this morning, that before I left, yeah. that the pastor, Rex Dyson, baptized Elvis in Jesus' name. He was a, a God-conscious man and did some beautiful gospel songs. And so I'm going to try to sing one of those. Not Elvis. This is wherever he is. May God bless his memory. But I'm going to be here in person. I'm already P. Raymond E. Parnell. And so I'll do this song, but he did it, and uh, holy blessings. You may ask me how I know my Lord is real. You 
made out the things I say and doubt the way I feel. But I know he's real today. He'll always be. I can feel his hand in mine. That's enough for me. I will never walk. He holds my hand He will guide each step I take And if I fall I know he'll understand Till the day he tells me why He loves me so I can feel his hand in mine, that's all I need to know. I will never walk alone, he holds my hand, he will guide each step I take. And if I fall, I know my Lord will understand. Till the day he tells me why, he loves me so. I can feel his hand in mine, that's all I need. was beautiful and that Ray was ni nice enough to when we had nut day um, at, at Farmer's Market he came and played there as well and the ladies were just yeah <laughs> I know it's those those dulcet tones oh wait a minute I don't need to be wearing this and next on board is Teresa Rapogel showing us would somebody take notes on this for me um, because this she's actually the reason why I asked her here was to tell me how to do this cause I, I don't know how to get on our Facebook site and put a posting. So she's going to show us how and somebody will remind me. All right, well, this is going to be boring after that. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing, of course, you need to do is have a Facebook page. So um, you'll just have to create your own page. Uh, you just go on, type Facebook into your search engine, and follow the directions. If you already have a Facebook page, the first thing you need to do is like the Kumana page. And so what you'll do is you'll go up here in the search search Facebook bar and just type in Kiwanis and Gail's already done that so hers is right here okay so just open that you want me to back up again okay okay hang on I have to wait for it to do you want do you still need me to back up okay all right well let's let's just do this let's do it one more time okay one more time all right so if you if you have not liked the Kiwanis page, you just type Kiwanis here in the search, and it'll take you to the page. Yeah, but you've already done that, Gail. So see, here's yeah, yours is already. It remembers that you've been there. Okay. So I just uh, click on that. Um, if you haven't liked the page, you'll see something. Oh gosh, I don't know. Up around in here somewhere, there it is, and it'll ask you to like the page. Once you like the page, everything that um, gets posted on there will show up in your own feed, on your own Facebook page. So if all you want to do is read things that have been posted, then, then you don't have to go anywhere except your own page. 
The only time you need to go to the Kiwanis page is if you want to post something, okay? So, um, in that case, you'll just see here where it says, oops, I'm sorry, this scrolled too quickly. Okay, do you see right here where it says, write something on this page? That's where you write something on the page. <laughs> okay, so... Um, so, Gail, is it okay if I write something on your page? Okay, because this is still, even though it says Kiwanis, this is still, this will show, this, this, should, this should show your picture when I post it, because your posting is you. Oh, okay. You can right. your thing so you can talk oh, while you're, thank you. Because I need two hands. You might write, this is a test, this is only a test, and then everybody will go like, what? I, I was going to type, thank you, Ray, for that song. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Perfect. That's beautiful. You do. Don't make fun of my typing. I can't type under pressure. We understand. Oh, I shouldn't have tried to get fancy. I do know how to spell. <laughs> it's always different when you're using somebody else's the message comes through. Okay, how's that look? Thank you, Ray, for this beautiful Oh, message. I deleted it with my I deleted it with my palm, sorry. Okay, how's that look? Okay, so now I just go down here and say post and there you go, it'll be on there. And for some reason you can't see it, but believe me it's on there. If we go back to Gail's home, well, it should be on there. Sometimes it's a little slow, but it should yeah. be on there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Being in here. Yeah. Those are my cousins. <laughs> Hello. So the only thing to remember is that, um, well, I mean, not to remember, but just to let you know, I don't know why I'm holding my shirt up, um, is that. I'm the administrator for the page, and I'll, I will see, too, anything that gets posted on there. And I'm the only one who can remove posts. So if you post something inappropriate, <laughs> then I'll delete it. <laughs> but otherwise, don't worry about it. You, um, Any Kiwanis person can post on our page. That's why it's there. Okay? Great. Okay, sorry, that wasn't nearly as entertaining as the song, but... Yeah. It was to me. It helps me. Helps me a lot, because I... When I see something that I want to have posted, I'm always, Teresa, will you put this up there? Will you, Teresa, will you put this up there? So I thought it was time that she came and, and was allowed to show us that we have that wonderful site, too. We have a, a wonderful site. Um, Jerry Schmier, who's not here today, is working hard on a new uh, possibility of a new uh, website for us as well. And uh, thank you, Teresa. And, you know, it was interesting. Yes, please. Um, I guess what, you know, I was interested when Jim was talking about, you know, reaching out to kids because I did have a kid follow me, but she's almost 16 and I think her mom encouraged her to uh, approach me. And what, one of the good things is that most kids think Facebook is for old people. So, hey, I'm good. You know, they're doing other things. So, um, uh, next on is and I, Mary Jo, like my cousin, yeah, is, has the same name. And she's going to tell us a little bit about something she got interested in that she heard about through Kiwanis and her husband. First of all, can you hear me in the back? My voice does not carry. Can you hear me? Yes. Bill? Okay. Um, Rodney shared with me, uh, gosh, maybe uh, over a year ago, that somebody came and talked to Qantas, Kathy Case, about quilts for kids. And I had just, he had just previously bought me a new machine, and I had just taken a class on quilting, and um, I started going to these. Saturday events, and I'm just having fun, contributing, helping out. Um, That's it. Just click on the right side. Right, this one? Okay. Well, I need to go that way. Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm not a good speaker, so bear with me. Um, <laughs> it didn't go. Okay. Um, I, um, I have sewn almost my whole life. Um, 
I enjoy sewing and looking, just uh, anticipating what the finished product will look like. I've made my, I made my wedding dress, our two daughters' wedding dresses, and all their attendance dresses. And for our daughters' weddings, that's the only thing I did. They did everything else. And it was, it was fun to anticipate that and see the finished product for them. I've um, made almost all my clothes growing up out of, the, it was fun for me, but at the same time, a lot of times that was the only way I was going to get a new outfit too. And we were married eight years before uh, Rodney bought me a store-bought garment. <laughs> but but I enjoyed I, I enjoyed this I enjoyed the sewing. It, it wasn't because he wouldn't. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and three years ago when I retired. Um, this is, uh, I wanted to do something to get back into helping and, and do, doing some, something for other people. So this, this is a way, when Randy came home and told me about these quilts for kids, this is a way, was, is a way for me to contribute back and, and help out some other kids. Um, and it, it also allows me to work with our grandchildren. Um, I helped, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing, Rodney, I'm sorry. I have helped our oldest granddaughter, she's 16, with her 4-H outfits and she has made some really nice garments. She has had outfits go to the state fair and a week ago I started helping our youngest granddaughter sew. And she just took a grasp of this really great. Um, we have, myself, I have made over at least 15 quilts for the Quilts for Kids. The one on the left, well, both, both of these are quilts I made for, for the Quilts for Kids. The local chapter of Quilts for Kids contributed over 900, at least 900 quilts last year that they took down to um, Peyton Manning and other places down in Indianapolis. And they also make um, bags for wheelchairs as well as the quilts for the kids. And is fun stuff. Okay, the, the one on the left is a quilt for kids. The one on the right is a story. I asked um, our two middle granddaughters, their, their other grandmother was diagnosed with cancer, and I asked them if they would like for me to make a quilt for Granny. And they said yes. So they went and picked out the fabrics and, and the designs. So I made the quilt on the right for their, their Grammy. And she calls it her money quilt. If you were to flip this quilt over, you, you, you can see the money there behind the little label I put on. She calls this her money quilt. <laughs> and that, that has been fun to do and, and meant a lot to me to be able to help do this for our granddaughters so that they can get something to their, their other Grammy. Um, 